So in Advanced.js, whenever we go to log in our user within our application, the default behavior is to search for the user by the UID value case sensitively, meaning that if we allow our users to log in with their username, which in this particular application we do, so if we jump into the config auth, we have username within the UIDs array. By the way, this is the Adonis.js auth repository from the lesson that we did a while back. I Feel free to pull this down if you want to follow along. But by default with Adonis.js here, the user is going to need to provide their username and email value as they provided it whenever they signed in with the same casing. So long as we're ensuring our usernames and emails within our application are case insensitive unique within our database, we can simplify things for our user by altering the auth attempt call to be case insensitive, allowing them to use their username and email with any case in combination that they need to. This particularly comes in handy on mobile or tablets and odd systems where the keyboard might default the first character to be capitalized. So within our application here, if I jump into the database, I have a user with the username Tom Gubbage. So if I actually try to come into my authentication here and log in with a capital T and capital G instead of being all lowercase here, I'm going to get back a response saying your username, email, or password is incorrect and it's going to fail to actually log me in. For verification's sake here, if I do it all lowercase, it's going to log me in just fine. So today we're going to take a look at how we can make this particular check case insensitive. And it's really not that hard. So first thing that you're going to want to do is dive into your authentication controller or wherever you have your registration validation happening. And you're going to want to make sure that you're saving things to be case insensitive for your username, email, or any other UID value that you might be saving. If you're making this change for an application that's already in production and has a production database, you're going to want to perform a query on that production database to make sure that this will not hinder any of your users ability to log in. You're going to want to make sure that there aren't any colliding usernames or emails where the casing is going to matter. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and dive into how we make this happen. So first let's jump into our user model. So let's go to models and user. And we're diving into our user model because whenever Adonis.js actually goes to authenticate our user, it actually has a check for a function called find for auth on our user model. And if that does not exist, then it's going to go about business as usual by taking our UID array and appending it into a query with an or where statement. So we're diving into our user model so that we can actually append in a find for auth function and this will allow us to build a query for ourselves instead of using this default or where statement. So let's go back into our user model here. Let's go ahead and just scroll down to the bottom and we're going to want to add a public static async function called find for auth. This will accept a UIDs array as the first argument and a UID value as the second. In my particular case, I know that this is going to be a string array. And then the UID value is going to be a string since that is going to be either the username or the email. Next, let's go ahead and create a query. So we can do this.query to start a query builder for our user model. And we'll do where query. And then instead of doing query dot something, we're going to want to loop over the UIDs. So let's do UIDs dot map, and then we'll have the UID. And then we'll do query dot or where. And then we'll add the UID that we're currently looping over. And then what we'll want to do is perform an I like here so that we can do a case insensitive check for the likeness of our value. And then we'll just provide the UID value here. So by using the I like, we're telling the query to perform a case insensitive like check for the UID value. However, we aren't adding any percent signs. So we're essentially performing a case insensitive equality check here. And that's exactly what we want to do. Now to top this off, we're going to only want one user. We're not going to want an array of users to log in. So we're going to want to check first or fail. So we can go ahead and save this. You can make this a little bit cleaner if you wish. I'll go ahead and break this down and this down here. There we go. And that should do it. So if we go ahead and jump back into our application here, come back over here and I try to log in with casings in my username, we get logged in just fine. And if I come back and do the lowercase again, everything's working just fine. Before we end this lesson, there's one last thing that I want to cover. Uh, so if we jump into our contracts directory here and go into the auth file, we're going to notice that we're going to get a TypeScript error now on our user. And that's because of this find for auth method, method that we added. I'm not 100% certain what the best result for this is. We definitely want this to be a static function. Uh, and I'm not sure the appropriate way to append this on here, but one workaround that I did find that gets rid of that TypeScript error is instead of export default here on our user, let's move that down to the bottom of our file. And then instead of having our find for auth method within the user, let's go ahead and do user 
find for auth equals async function. And we can take this function here and move it on down there, just like so. And now with that defined that way, for some reason, that gets rid of that TypeScript error. So everything should be working just fine, the same as before. Come back into here, do our capitalization for the username, log in, and there we go. So that's how you can go about adding case-insensitive checks for your authentication UIDs.